What is going on, Champion Squad? It is your boy, Soldi. Welcome, faces back to another Apex Legends video. And finally, we have the advanced movement guide. I got the hand cam right here. We also have the face cam this time. And I'm going to be going in depth with some high advanced tips here with your in game movement with any legend. This is not going to be a grapple video. You know, you saw the thumbnail, you saw Pathfinder. It's not a grapple video, but I probably will do that in the future. Definitely let me know. But this is going to be more of the in game fundamentals that you should be using. And this is definitely aimed for the higher skill players in the game. However, if you are a casual player and just playing the free time practice on whatever i'm discussing in this video eventually you're going to get better and better at it and that's how you're going to master this game or the movement part of this game what i think in this game you got aiming movement and in-game decision making those are the three biggest things but if you are new here consider subscribing to the channel i post the best apex tips to make you an even better player so without further ado i'm going to hop onto the five tips that i have today and I actually have two bonus tips at the end of the video so be sure to stick around so the first tip we're going to talk about is sliding and that's going to be sliding off of objects we're going to go up to the top here and uh, there's a couple ways you can slide off of objects in apex legends first obviously being just a regular knee slide then you have the slide jump and then you have the slide jump slide so that's the hardest one to do but it's going to bring you the farthest off of the object so first things first like i said you got the regular slide notice that brought me about right here to the edge of that rock just sliding off of the uh, platform here so we're going to try a slide jump this time without sliding after. Now, I didn't even go close to where I was in the first time. So slide jumping without sliding after, just basic sliding off of an object will definitely get you farther, as you notice right there. But now what I do wanna discuss is this. This is gonna be the best way to go off of any object, you know, mountain, building, whatever you're jumping off of. That brought me way past that marker there after the uh, regular slide. So that's a slide jump slide as soon as you land oh also one quick thing i do want to mention is that it takes two seconds for your slide to reset so if let's say if you slide right here i'm running slide i went pretty far but now if i try to slide again it's not going to be as far so if you consistently slide it slows down slows down unless you wait for that two second refresh then you're going to be good to go so here we go again this is going to be the last time doing this method slide jump slide it's going to bring you way farther than if you're just regular sliding off of it. So that's key. So the next thing we're going to talk about is slide stopping on enemies. And in general, you should be doing this. This is key to use your movement as best as possible during a gunfight. So we're going to do it on this dummy here in the center here. I got my R9 and basically it's sliding. As soon as you want to stop sliding, all you have to do is hit B. So slide and then B. I want it to stop there. Let's say if I want to cut it even shorter than that, I can slide stop. I just hit B again just to stop it. So you start it with B, obviously, and then you stop it with B and then um, circle for PS4, right? Uh, PS4 players, don't roast me. I don't have my con PS4 controller here. But uh, yeah, so whenever you want to stop, just hit that slide button again. It's going to stop you. So this is how it's going to look if you're trying to go for an enemy. And um, you don't necessarily have to go straight up on it. I'm going to do all the ways. So this is the first way. Now notice, as soon as I stop sliding, I strafed in the other direction to shoot him. Basically what's happening is, so let's say you're this enemy and you see me coming sliding across your screen. So you're just gonna try to pre-aim my movement. So you're gonna go be going this way, but as soon as the enemy stops and starts strafing in that direction after a big slide, your movement's gonna be all whacked out. So essentially it'll be looking like this, and then he would have to turn his aim back the other way, which is definitely going to help you, the person that's sliding, help avoid taking damage. And you're essentially going to get more damage off. That exchange is going to be in your favor. So we're going to do it one more time in this direction. Slide stopped, aimed strafe to the left, aim strafe in the opposite way that you're going in. So it's harder for him to track you then. So if you're just going in the same direction, which I do sometimes, I'm not going to lie. So let's say just keep sliding in one direction and keep shooting. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but majority of the gunfights that I notice a big difference when they don't hit me is when I strafe in the other direction. Now let's try it on this side here. Let me wait a couple seconds for my slide to reset. So here we go, we're going in this direction now. Again, assuming the enemy is there. Slide, stop, strafe in the other direction and shoot. Let's do it one more time now. Slide, stop, strafing in the opposite direction. Remember, don't strafe in the same direction. You could do it, but again, most of the times I see where I have a big success in winning more gunfights is when I'm strafing the opposite direction from where my original slide was. Now you can also do it forward. So let's say the enemy's in front of you. You can also do it this way, no problem. It's still gonna help, just like that. But now you can incorporate different kinds of strafe movements, crouching into the mix. So this time I'll do a left to right uh, and add like crouching into the mix. So basically crouch crouch left to right shoot same deal though 
you're sliding, stopping, aiming. So that's the tip number two, which was slide stops. Very beneficial. Always use it every time I'm playing Apex Legends. Third tip we're going to hop on is left and right running. And that's basically, you can do that in a lot of situations. Uh, left and right running is this, for example. Let's say, let me waste half on my mag so I can't one mag this guy. So I'm shooting, shooting right here. When I'm reloading, run to the left, run to the right, run to the left. You're swooping in and out of his bullets. That's going to keep you from avoiding taking damage while you're reloading. Besides, let's say you don't have any ammo in your secondary weapon or the secondary weapon that you have. You don't trust yourself to use it in that specific situation. So you want to reload the gun that you originally started with. Keep that left to right tempo right there when you're reloading. So we'll try it again. Let me just let me finish him real quick. Waste some ammo so I can't one mag him. So here we go. Here. There it is. Just run left, right, left, right while you're reloading. And as soon as you get that mag off and then you can shoot him. Now, another good situation where left and right running is crucial is when you're running away from an enemy trying to get cover. Let's say they have three people pulling up on you and you really, you know, you're not going to win that gunfight. So you come off with some shots. You got to run right here. Left to right, left to right. Get into the place, primarily going in the direction that you really want to go. So let's say I want to go behind here, but you don't want to run in that straight direction. That's going to get you there faster. Yes, running in one direction, just like this. However, if you run in that stutter step direction, left to right, um, you're going to be more inconsistent with your movement. They're not going to know exactly uh, where to preempt to shoot you. They're not going to get a whole mag off of you. But if you're running in one direction like this, it's very predictable. They can just preempt you the entire way. And that's how a lot of people get beamed down trying to run to cover. So a lot of times what I do is I just stutter step it just like this. I want to get there, stutter step, boom, now I'm ready. And if I wanted to go that corner, stutter step, stutter step, left to right, left to right, boom. So you're basically going to be zigzagging on the screen, so it'll be so hard for it to hit you, especially if they have like a wingman, longbow. If they're sniping you at a long distance, this definitely helps a lot. Or even close range, meter range, any range, you know, stutter step it just like that. So again, real quick, just to cover the third tip, use that stutter step left to right. Whenever you're reloading your weapon, that ghost time that, you know, oh, damn it, he's going to kill me. If you're dodging bullets and you're going left to right and then you end up reloading, then he has to reload because he missed all the shots and then you can finish him off with your next mag that you have. So that's used for if you're reloading and if you're running away, bailing gunfights, no matter what distance you are. So moving on to tip number four, the next thing I want to talk about is mini B hopping. Now I have my crouch. It's press the crouch, not hold the crouch. Um, hold the crouch is actually where you can do the real B hopping on console. However, I'm not used to that at all. And I tried to get adjusted to it didn't happen. Uh, so mine is just press the crouch. So if I press it once, I stay crouched, uh, press it again, it comes up. And mini B hopping is basically slide jumping. And as soon as you land after one slide jump, you jump, crouch, jump, crouch, jump, crouch. So this is what it's going to look like. Just like that. Now, the way it works is it's going to keep you moving in one direction. And the biggest benefit to this is that you can turn your aim. Let's say you want to check out and see what's going on to your right side while doing that. You can and keep moving in the same direction. That's the biggest benefit to this mini uh, B hopping that I like to call it. It'll look just like that. So I'm literally coming across this way and doing that mini B hop is the same speed as running, you know, until you get to a certain point. Eventually, you're going to go so slow that it's pointless. Just stop doing it and then run to that point, I guess. But it's going to let you get intel on what's going on around you while keeping that same momentum in the direction you want to go and still have eyes on what's around you. So that's crucial. I want to do it uh, the other way, though. I want to do it this way. That way you guys can see. And I am using my paddles for this. So again, I'm slide jumping into it. Just one slide jump. And as soon as I land, I jump again but you crouch instantly jump crouch so it's like jump crouch jump crouch jump crouch on my paddles basically so here we go that's sort of how it looks again i'm moving in this direction but i'm looking that way just in case to see what's going on see if he's trying to make a play on you and this lets you plan out ahead of time you know what the enemy is doing that way you can counter him it's actually really fun doing it too i like doing it. you can do it with your weapon too same thing here once you do it to a certain distance, so then you start to slow down, just stop it there and just start running. Of course, it's going to be a big help if you are doing it while you're knee sliding off of something. Let's say like that. You'll get a lot more speed doing it. This is all about running in the direction you want to go, get into the place that you want to go while still keeping eyes around you. Uh, it's a really good form of movement. Very hard to do if you don't have paddles on your controller or a different button layout, though. So definitely recommend if you don't have a scuff or a lead controller or, you know, a PS4 Vantage, whatever they have, definitely get a different button layout for your controller that lets you still keep your thumb on your aiming stick so that way you can see what's going on around you. This one's going to definitely take some practice getting used to. So I would definitely recommend trying it out um, just straight off the rip, looking one direction before you start looking to the left. So just like this. 
So that's mini bee hopping. I do a lot, especially when I'm in a building and I'm looting. Now the fifth tip I have is slide healing. This is another really big thing that I use almost, I would say every single time I'm playing Apex Legends, I do this 100% uh, without a doubt. So this is basically, and that's why I have a little bit of damage off of my armor here so I can get this bat off. A normal player, how they would take the heal is they would, let's say this is covered, they would run to cover and then take the heal. But the biggest thing you wanna do is be able to slide heal at the same time. So it's gonna look like this. I actually added in a, a left strafe there, but let's say doing it in one direction, that's what you want to practice, just doing this. Here we go, we'll do it again. Heel, slide, jump, slide. So I'm running, heel, slide, jump, slide. And now, if, like I said, that's the way you want to practice it, but again, if you want to do it uh, to perfection and, and add a strafe in there, so you're strafing around an object, so I want to go behind this thing right here. Sort of turn your body. Uh, with your aiming analog stick. That's why it's crucial to be able to control your aim the entire time while using your movement uh, features like jump and crouch and everything of the sort. So ultimately what this does is it saves you time because you're gonna get your bat off faster since you're using it before getting to cover. So let's say if I would go over here and then use it, I would have to wait, I have a gold shield obviously, but I have to wait that full three to four seconds to get it off. But if I'm using it while going to that place, so let's say I'll start using it right there, literally a second and a half, maybe two seconds already before I even got to this cover. So that way the bat's already halfway off, I would say, while you're at covers. That's gonna definitely save you a lot of time when you're using your heals. So fifth tip was slide healing. Make sure you incorporate it a lot. Trust me, it's gonna save you a lot of time when you're uh, playing really good kids. Now moving on to the bonus tips that I have for you guys, we have wall jumping and slide after climbing. Probably heard of these before. Now wall jumping, I don't do too, too often, but I definitely do know how to do it. I just think it's it's kind of a risky play. How it works is you have to slide, jump onto a wall, start climbing it. So you're moving your left analog stick up. And then as soon as you start climbing, you jump off of it and turn your analog stick in the direction you want to go. So this is how it would look. Just like that. I'll do it off of this wall. You're just keeping slide jump then off of the wall. It's gonna take you time to get this down. Perfect, trust me on that. This took me a while to get down. I still don't do it too much in uh, public matches or ranked games or whatever. Actually, when I'm playing, should I say, I don't really do it on enemies, but I do wanna start incorporating it because it's pretty cool. The benefit of it is let's say this rock wasn't here and you got an enemy behind this wall. What you can do is slide jump off the wall and be in the air while rounding the corner. He's not gonna expect it. So it looked like this. And I see a lot of pro players do it just to move forward. You see how I jump forward like that? Um, I guess it's like a, a boost of a jump to get you farther in the direction. But again, this is going to take some practice, 100%. So again, slide, jump, catch the wall. You see how I start to climb the wall? That's when you want to jump immediately off of the wall. You got to start climbing though. So if you don't start climbing the wall, it's not going to work. So here we go again, slide, jump, catch the wall, jump off. And notice my aim flicks in direction I want to go. So if I want to jump this way, wall bouncing off of that wall, you have to flick your analog stick immediately, immediately after jumping. And if I want to jump, let's say there off of this wall, I flicked it just like a quarter turn that way basically the direction you want to go in. Again, I don't really use it too much in game, but I do want to start incorporating it. So I just got to practice it a little bit more. See that time, that's probably how it's going to look when you guys first attempt it, if you haven't done it before. Um, but yeah, it, just like that, it's going to take you some practice to get it down clean. But that's wall jumping. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is sliding after climbing, which is also super beneficial, especially if you're trying to run away, you don't want to get shot by somebody and you're climbing a wall. Uh, so basically I'm climbing here. Slide immediately after you climb. This is gonna take perfect timing to knock it down correctly. Um, you might not get a first try, but it's easier than wall jumping, I would say. So as soon as you're about just at the top of climbing that wall, hold B and it's gonna slide you off of it. So here we go. That's how I did a claw for you guys. I didn't use my paddle. And you can also do it on anything that you can climb and get over. So as long as you can get over whatever you're climbing, you can do it. So I can actually do it on that one if I wanted to. So here we go. We're climbing, climbing, climbing. At the top, slide. And it brings you, look how far it brings you. It's going to save you a lot of time trying to escape an enemy. Or if you're trying to catch and hunt down an enemy, it's definitely going to help you do that as well. I'm going to try it right here. 
There we go. Perfect. But nevertheless, those are the key fundamental movements that I do every time I'm playing. This is going to get you really, really good at the game. And like I said, movement is one of the top three contributing factors in becoming a much better player at the game besides aiming and obviously in game decision making. But mastering your movement and your aiming, even if you make a bad play, sometimes that can save you a lot of the times. So let's say you make a bad play, but you have really good aim and movement. It's going to save you in the situation. And that's actually how you can get better in game decision making from those two things. Let's say you do make an error and a mistake you can capitalize on it by your aiming and your movement and the next time in the future oh maybe we want to take a different route and a different approach to that play it's going to help you learn faster definitely with your aiming and movement but i hope you guys enjoyed today's video be sure to drop a like on it if you enjoyed subscribe join the champion squad we're on the road to 30,000 subscribers hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and as always this has been your boy Soldy. i'm signing off peace